Hi everyone, this is Molly and welcome to another video in the Twin Flames Healing Journey teaching series where I'm guiding you through more of the energies of this spiritual partnership that you have with another person. So we're talking about the energies between the Divine Feminine and Divine Masculines and of course this all originates within you. This is really more of an internal experience of all of your energy. And so we learn about ourselves through different relationships, through different experiences, different feelings and pain and there's just so many layers of it. And this teaching series is meant to help you really get into the fullness of who you are. So that is really the driving intention here. And as I've been teaching these videos, uh, questions have come up from you. You have sent me emails and messages uh, with things that are either happening in your world or that you're wondering about. So in this video, I'm going to address your questions. And I hope that these help many people who have perhaps thought of the same thing or wondered about these same issues as well. So in this video, I'm going to answer your questions about uh, what if the karmic feminine and the divine masculine keep trying to get back together? What are the differences between a karmic feminine and a soulmate feminine? Um... And then I'm just going through my list here where you're at, you're asking questions about if you're in separation with your divine masculine uh, energy and, and what to do about that. And then also some of you asked about my personal experiences, which I'm only going to touch on a little um, to, to give you an understanding of how I view the energies now. So I'm just going to read these questions and we'll go from there, okay? So the first question, and these are anonymous. So if you sent me this question, I'm not going to say your name and address. <laughs> these are anonymous. So this question is, I believe that my divine masculine is aware of our connection now and he is possibly researching the twin flame connection. But I also suspect the karmic is researching it too because she wants to get him back. Back. She is a black widow and I could see her trying to do anything possible to stay with him for her own reasons. And he is too naive and kind to question her intentions. Still, so she could be watching these d twin flame videos and want to become the divine feminine. Molly, is that possible? Can she become the divine feminine and be his equal partner if they get back together? Great question, right? So the short answer is no, but this is why. Remember how when I started this series, it was talking about that the the twin flame energy is that 3.0 in energy. So it's the person who is more advanced, more features, they have more needs, they have more depth, they have more to them. And most people are 1.0s. And I mean this with loving kindness. I mean this with an understanding that everyone has gifts and abilities um, and, and things they're here to experience. So it's not as if there's meant to be a hierarchy. It's more that the energy is expanded in the twin flame connection. And so what you have here is someone who who is trying to perhaps repair a situation or heal a situation that they can't ultimately heal within their own energy field because it's ultimately not the right fit. It's almost like that plug doesn't fit that socket. Okay, it's like there really isn't that full fit. And so if you have a karmic who believes that they can become that equal partner to them, well, that energetically doesn't match um, because the twin flame connection is not a connection where you just change your clothes and you become someone else and you don't just 
go to counseling or therapy to strengthen or repair the relationship and then you are suddenly a perfect match. It's not that kind of connection. It's a spiritual, energetic connection that no one else can claim. No one else can sit in that same chair. Um, no, meaning like I'm getting the image of two thrones, right? The king and the queen energetically. Of like they're, they're in these chairs for a reason because they're equals. And no one else can just be an imposter. And so with the karmic and the divine masculine, if they're spinning in circles in their relationship, uh, they're on the merry-go-round, they're trying to work things out, well, hopefully that heals them. Hopefully there's good things there that benefits both of them. But that it's, it's almost funny because that's what karma is. It circles around. It doesn't let go. It thinks I'm going to go back for more. I'm going to try this again. And it's like missing the whole point that the connection is done. And why can't you let go? Why can't you move on? Why can't you, you know, move ahead? Because the when the karmic relationship is complete, it helps each partner move forward to what they need to do next to heal. So you've taken it as far as you can go with someone and that's why a breakup occurs. That's why, okay, we're not connecting. We don't have the same values, the same emotional needs, the same understanding, the same dreams, the same whatever. You know, all of that shows up in the human conversations. But in the spiritual world, it's like the energies don't match because one person, the divine masculine, is ultimately energetically bigger. And so that karmic... She's on her own journey of healing uh, at her own pace, in her own way, and she could be a black widow, um, she could be a seductress, you know, she could play different archetypes, but she's not really meant to be with him long term. Like, they're both meant to come together to learn and then be on their way, and that can be done with grace and uh, peace, you know, ideally. Maybe it doesn't happen that way but that's ideally what happens is that both people then move on and say wow I really learned a lot about myself in that relationship and they're supposed to learn energies that they don't want to repeat that's the thing with the karmic stuff is that you really get it clear okay I don't want to repeat that I don't want to stay in that same pattern or keep attracting these same peoples peoples I just said peoples um so they're meant to elevate you that the end of a karmic relationship is meant to elevate people but that is a free choice um I've I've talked with many people who who can see that one party is ready to grow and another doesn't get it (laughs) like they're just still circling around so to answer your question the karmic cannot become the divine feminine that isn't just an open seat that anyone can sit in because this is an energetic connection. It's a deep spiritual connection that you've had with someone for lifetimes. Uh, it's, it's not from the mind. It's actually in the heart is where it lives. Now, another con- a question that came in connected to this is, you know, okay, my karmic and my divine masculine breakup and then he goes into a different relationship with another person but it's not a karmic relationship what is that definition so this is a good question because this is actually then most likely a soulmate connection for him so a soulmate connection is very different than a karmic connection a soulmate connection is softer It has kindness, it's healing, it's loving. It doesn't have the Richter scale energies of a karmic relationship. So, I mean, I'm just getting the image of literally the Richter scale going off because of the chaos or drama or emotional intensity or, you know, all the high octane stuff that happens with the karmic connection. The soulmate relationship is healing and it can be a safe place to land honestly. So you might not resonate with the karmic energies, but there could be a soulmate connection there that he is in and he's experiencing. 
I did a video on the karmic relationship because that's usually the most intense for both parties. Uh, again, that is the relationship that can cause the most pain, but it's meant to move you forward. It's meant to be a catapult that moves you forward. Uh, but the other third party connection can be that soulmate connection where the energy is softer. Like I always feel it as a soft pink it's just kinder, it's nurturing, it's feminine, and it does healing work. It does heal more of the divine masculine's energy. So he could be in a soulmate relationship where there isn't the drama and the craziness of a karmic situation, but he just is looking for that softness, uh, that that type of feminine energy where he is healing and he is maybe in a healing, loving energy with somebody. Um and that can be a good place to be as he progresses in understanding himself, his energy, his heart. Uh, that soulmate relationship might be a place where he opens up into his heart, his emotional self even more. Now, it's important to understand, however, that with the soulmate relationship, there is the energy of connection, perhaps some chemistry, you know, love, there's good things there. But what happens in these relationships is that, again, they aren't the fullness of who the divine masculine truly is. Now, this also pertains to the divine feminine, by the way, this works vice versa. So she could be in a soulmate relationship as well. And that relationship is good for her. It's soothing. Maybe it's stable. It feels right. There's good things in the connection. There's chemistry, right? It's a, it's a good relationship overall. But what happens is that when you're a twin flame, you want more. You have that sense of, I need more. I want more. You get bored. You become uninterested. You miss something. You're like, you're missing something. And what you're missing is that deeper connection with your equal. And you sense that, like a part of you feels that. You know you have a good thing, right? Like the relationship is a solid B plus and it's okay and it's good for now and it does good things for your world or for your life. Um, so the soulmate relationship, again, it can be a really good place to be, but there's a part of you that senses there's more. So in this example, um, if a divine masculine is with a soulmate, there could come a point where he wants more and maybe he needs to communicate that or he knows he needs to break up or end the relationship, but he doesn't want to. I mean, this can be the back and forth energy where he's not strong yet in his heart to maybe go it alone or to trust what his heart is saying. And so the, the mind, again, is the strong messenger and can keep someone in place, can keep them in a situation or in a relationship, uh, the status quo for safety, for, for whatever reasons it might be. But what happens with the soulmate connection is that at, how it typically shows up is that you say, I love you but I'm not in love with you. It's one of those dynamics where you feel that your full heart isn't truly in the relationship. There's a part of your heart, of your energy that wants more, that again, you're energetically, the antennas <laughs> of who you are understand that there's a better match for you with someone who matches up with all of you. Okay, like all of these points, and I've been talking about it in terms of the chakras, and it's that person who matches up with all seven of your chakras, and so a soulmate relationship could meet five of your chakras, right, or four, but they don't meet all seven of your own energy fields. So that's why a soulmate relationship can be interesting because it can be healing and loving and kind and good and, you know, you can justify it in your mind and... There's more pluses to it than minuses, but there's a part of you that senses there could be more. So for those of you who uh, believe that your divine masculine or your divine feminine is in that soulmate relationship, you know, that's something that, well, you don't have control over, so to speak, 
all you can do is continue to be in your own energy field and continue to be on your path and in your journey um, because there are bigger energies at work here that are that are really guiding the process and you you have to stay in yourself and stay in your own energy of well how can I heal myself now what do I need to take care of in me now like you come back to your power which is within you and the power of your mind the power of your heart the power of your dreams the power of who you are in the world and you stay there and you live from there and the more that you trust that the more that you understand what's best for you next there's also big cycles of energies that happen and so this leads me to the other question where um, some people have asked, well, do you talk about your personal experiences in these videos, Molly? And are you in contact with your twin at all? And so what I'm going to say to you about that is that I, I have a very interesting experience with this because I have not been in contact um, for years and years and years. I have no contact or connections with anybody in that part of my life. Um, all of that left many years ago. And so my intention with this teaching series is to help connect you with the overall energies that I've learned. And so these are collective energies, my friends. These are collective energies that affect many of us. And one of the biggest um, recent energies was in August of 2017. There was a lot that came through energetically that just busted things open. It's like if something wasn't connected to your heart, if it wasn't truly you, if it wasn't meant to serve you for the long term, bam, it had to go. And so this was really a big deal for a lot of people. And maybe they experienced some kind of tsunami or they experienced something that was overwhelming or out of the blue. I mean, everyone felt these energies, but I feel like there was a lot of twin flame energies that just got activated and you just saw what was in your heart or you felt it, or you just had a new awareness. Um, I'm seeing like shattered glass. It's like things just got shattered and you could have been really caught off guard. This is also why the twin flame energies became so popular. I mean, everything just broke out and people were like, wait a minute, what's going on? And maybe it's this person and who is this? And it's been a really big time of looking at what's in the heart. So everything I talk about is at a collective level. Um, and, and so there could be personal things related to that. Um, to my stuff, but I don't know specifics. I don't know details. I'm not in contact and I don't look. <laughs> I really don't because I just decided a long time ago that I have to stay loving and kind to myself and trust that. So I don't know, honestly, if they're, um, I haven't been in contact for years. And I have a life now and I have a great husband and I have a wonderful son and I have a busy career and I just, I have a life where I have to keep my energy and I help you and I give you good, you know, teachings and, and anything that I can. But, um, what I've learned is how to remain in my own power and to just trust that I'm meant to share this information now and that I hope it benefits anyone or everyone who's drawn to this topic. And I have no ill will or, you know, I only wish people the best from that time in my life. So the short answer is that the only contact I have is through my feelings, intuition, and energy. Nothing in the physical, nothing in the 3D, nothing elsewhere um, because I have to be very clear about what is for my highest and best good and there are ways that you if you are in separation or you can also honor who you are now and honor that other person with respect and kindness and the best possible ways that isn't something that you have to do uh, physically or through communication. I mean, you can do it in other ways. And I'm going to talk about that in some of the upcoming videos. Um, 
types of reunions and uh, how twin flames can support each other. We're also going to talk about healing the divine feminine energies and then another video on healing the divine masculine energies. What I found is that there's a lot of idealism around this connection and you have to combine that with reality. And so you hear about this connection or you make an understanding of who this is for you. Well, ultimately, there are many factors involved with the kinds of people in your life. It's all energy. It's all about who's your equal, who's, who's on the same page as you, who's traveling at the same speed as you, who's, who's traveling with your best intentions in mind. I, I feel like... Uh, one of the reasons I had to do this teaching series is because I think there's a lot of simplification around the twin flame journey that needs some grounding. And that's what I hope to offer you in this series is just to understand this is about a spiritual connection, a partnership with somebody else. And that can happen in so many ways. I know that some people believe that they're twin flame is in spirit, that they're not in the physical body, uh, that their twin flame has already passed, uh, that they haven't met their twin flame yet. Um, you know, there's just so many ways that people put the pieces together and I'm not one to determine or referee that. That's not my role. I'm not going to tell you yes or no about your case. I'm only going to give you the information and it's for you to evaluate and to see what you resonate with. And this information is ultimately designed to benefit everyone involved. You know, it's meant to be helpful because everyone is here to do healing work. And it can be really hard and it can be really intense. But it's meant to benefit people. And that's my intention with this video and with answering your questions um, is to help you understand all the different energies involved. Because it's funny that it starts to click when you hear this information, it kind of helps you categorize things or understand it better and, and to see the bigger picture. And that's really what I hope to do is to help you see the bigger picture. Um, so I believe I answered these questions here that you submitted and I appreciate that you reached out to ask them. I hope these were beneficial insights. And I'll be back with another video for you very soon we'll, where we will continue uh, exploring these energies and helping you understand how to make the most of this energy in your world. Thank you, friends.